very good morning and welcome back from the previous lecture so in our previous lecture uh, we have seen the short key principle and in the previous session we have gone through the point contact diode and the transistor device hamt we saw now we will go ahead with the other remaining type of a diode so last time we started with point contact diodes and we have completed its construction equivalent diagram and application now let us go ahead to study another type of a diode that is a short key barrier diode okay so first of all we should understand what is this terminology short key barrier diode and what is the principal mechanism why it is called as a short key barrier diode okay so we already discussed during the construction of high electron mobility transistor is that the field effect transistor is going to have the three terminals source gate and drain terminal out of these three terminal that time we discussed that source and drain terminal are going to form the ohmic contact with the given undoped region right while the gate terminal is going to form a short key barrier type of junction now what do you mean by this short key barrier type of a junction is the principal construction of the short key barrier diode okay so first of all we should understand this particular terminology what do you mean by a short key barrier type of junction okay so the working principle of short key barrier diode is based on the same principle right so let us go ahead and study what is this short key barrier diode and for what different purpose this diode is being used for now here these are the nodes on which the short key barrier diode construction working principle is explained to you okay so first of all before going into the short key barrier theory first of all we should understand a terminology called as a work function of the metal okay so as we already studied in the case of a physics in 12th we know the definition of work function of a given material or a metal the work function of a material or a metal is typically defined as the energy required by an electron to escape into the vacuum detaching from the metal right so typically the energy required by an electron in order to escape from the metallic structure into the vacuum this particular energy is specified as work function needed for that particular electron right so the typical energy needed so here i will underline this ter particular term okay so which i highlighted also so the typical energy needed by an electron in order to escape from its metallic structure into the vacuum is of the order of 2 to 6 electron volts okay so this is a typical value of energy needed by electron in order to escape from the metal structure into the vacuum so as on when we heat up the metal up to this particular electron volt 2 to 6 electron volt the electron can get detached from the metallic structure and it can be escaped into a given vacuum structure right so here the required work function can be lowered by the application of electric field to the metal surface okay so here we understood what is the terminology called as a work function right so the work function is the energy needed by the electron in order to escape from the metallic structure and we already saw this particular energy is of order 2 to 6 electron volts okay so if we want to reduce this particular energy and if we want to escape that electron into the vacuum by supplying a lesser value of energy at that time what we need to do is the required work function energy it can be lowered by means of applying electric field to the metal structure okay so here what we want is we want to reduce this work function energy which is required by the electron we want to escape the electron from the metallic surface into the vacuum and also we want to do that by consuming less amount of energy than the typically required value right 
so in order to do that what we need to do is we need to apply the electric field to the metal surface this particular phenomena is shown over here in this particular left hand side diagram that i am showing with the arrow diagram right so here we have a metal surface okay so when this metal surface is not applied with any particular electric field right so at that particular time whenever we want to detach an electron so the detached electron we call it as an escaped electron over here right so in order to extract the electron from the metal surface without the presence of applied electric field the typical work function or the energy required will be around 2 to 6 electron volt okay so on the other side if you compare the right hand side diagram over here with this arrow diagram what we have done we have applied an external dc electric field fixed dc electric field is applied to this metal surface at that time the work function which is denoted by phi which will be lesser than 2 to 6 electron volt and still we can get the escaped electron from the surface so here in order to achieve the escaped electrons detached electron from the metallic surface without applying the work function energy which is required in the range of 2 to 6 electron volt at that time what we need to do is we need to apply the dc electric field to the metallic structure at that time the work function energy required by the electron will get lowered okay and which will become less than 2 to 6 electron volt okay so here the underlying term is very important now lowering of metal work function in order to produce electrons so what we are doing we are generating free escaped electrons from a metal structure and that how we are doing by applying the external dc electric field okay which will lower the value of work function energy right so lowering of metal work function in order to produce the electrons okay by means of applying electric field to the metal surface is called as a short key effect right and short key diodes are based on the principle of this mechanism and these diodes are principally dependent upon majority charge carrier right so here the short key effect is explained to you so whatever we discussed over here that in order to detach an electron from a metallic surface a typical work function energy required is in the range of 2 to 6 electron volt right so if we don't want to provide this much work function energy what we do is we will apply external electric field to the metallic surface which will lower the value of work function energy required by an electron and the electrons can be detached from the metallic surface by applying external electric field and this particular operation or phenomena we call it as a short key effect so in short what is the short key effect short key effect is the effect in which we apply external electric field to the metallic surface in order to lower the work function energy required by electron in order to detach it from the metallic surface okay so this particular way of generating electron by actually applying external electric field to the metallic surface this phenomena we call it as a short key effect right and the electrons which are generated by means of this particular application we call it as a short key operation or short key process okay so this is the meaning of the word short key effect right and the diodes which are constructed on this particular principle of short key effect are known as short key barrier diodes right so here what we are doing we are not using any semiconductor see if you here if you consider these operation here we directly utilize a metal and not a semiconductor and from the metal surface we directly detached out the electrons and not by using a semiconductor so here direct detachment of electron is taking place from the metallic surface and not from semiconductor 
ओके एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर टाइप ऑफ चार्ज कैरियर डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम द सर्फेस ऑफ मेटल वी कॉल दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रोसेस ऑज अ शॉर्ट की इफेक्ट इन द शॉर्ट की इफेक्ट द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर जनरेटेड नॉट बाय मेकिंग यूज ऑफ ए सेमी कंडक्टर बट वी आर गोइंग टू मेक यूज ऑफ मेटेलिक स्ट्रक्चर एंड दैट मेटेलिक स्ट्रक्चर इज डायरेक्टली गोइंग टू प्रोवाइड अस द नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन वेन इट इज सब्जेक्टेड टू एक्सटर्नली अप्लाइड डी सी इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड राइट द शॉर्ट की बैरियर डायोड्स मेक यूज ऑफ दिस शॉर्ट की प्रिंसिपल सो आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड वट डू मीन बाय द शॉर्ट की प्रिंसिपल राइट सो द डायोड्स विच आर कंस्ट्रक्टेड बाय मेकिंग यूज ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रिंसिपल आर कॉल्ड एज शॉर्ट की बैरियर डायोड्स राइट एंड दीज टाइप्स ऑफ ए डायोड what how they are going to be different from ordinary pn junction semiconductor diode please remember these are not semiconductor diodes the electrons are directly generated from the metallic surface without using semiconductor so what is the difference between the short key barrier diode and ordinary pn junction semiconductor diode then the difference is that in short key barrier diode we can quickly produce electrons from directly a metal to semiconductor interface okay so in the case of normal or nominal pn junction diodes the electrons are getting generated from semiconductor to semiconductor while here in the case of short key barrier diode we are going to generate electrons by the interface formed between metal to semiconductor right so the metal to semiconductor interface so this particular sentence is very important so a short key barrier junction so the junction is formed between a metal and semiconductor is normally called as a short key barrier okay and whenever a junction is formed between the two semiconductors that we call it as a ordinary pn junction right so this is the basic difference between the pn junction and the short key barrier junction remember that the short key barrier junction is generated between metal to semiconductor junction right so the metal to semiconductor interface will maintain the equilibrium and it will produce the barrier potential okay so here in the case of short key barrier diode whatever barrier potential of the diode that we are going to get so that is formed between a metal and semiconductor and not between semiconductor and semiconductor right the barrier potential produced is far less than ordinary pn junction diode and therefore fast switching is obtained so this is the principle of working right so we normally know that so here uh, i will draw a symbol a pn junction diode so we can take a p type of semiconductor with n type of semiconductor and we can have a junction form between them and this we call it as a pn junction diode right so where on the left hand side and on the right hand side both we have semiconductor right so in the case of short key barrier diode one of the semiconductor of any of the either side is replaced with a metal right so in pn junction diode normally no in the case of silicon pn junction diode the barrier potential is around 0.7 volts right so 0.7 volt is typically the value of barrier potential in the case of ordinary silicon based pn junction diode now when we replace one of the semiconductor with a metal as in the case of short key barrier diode the barrier potential provided by the short key barrier diode will be lesser than 0.7 volt okay and what will happen if the diode is going to provide lesser barrier potential definitely it will give us a faster switching speed of the operation as the barrier potential is very less compared to ordinary pn junction diodes the short key barrier diodes are able to switch at a faster rate compared to ordinary pn junction diodes okay so here below a typical construction of how the short key barrier diode look like and the actual figure of industrial short key barrier diode is shown on the left hand side right so this particular black terminal is normally taken as a cathode right and the right hand side here it is a anode okay so typical construction how it look like it is shown on the right hand side 
now on the right hand side we have the junction made between the semiconductor and metal so first of all here the metal semiconductor junction is formed over this particular region okay so this particular region the metal gets joined with a semiconductor material okay so here we have this base material this base material is a semiconductor right this semiconductor base material has grown with n type of a silicon so this is a semiconductor and this semiconductor is directly connected with metal contact over here so this anode is made up of a metal and directly a metal and semiconductor junction which is shown over here it is denoted right and here we have the windows form forming a rectifying contact so here we place the anode and the opposite side we place the cathode which will form the metalling rectifying contacts while the junction form between this n type silicon and this metal over here this black color strip is a metal so this is going to form a short key barrier type of a junction okay so this is a typical construction how the short key barrier diode look like now how we operate this particular diode by controlling the applied electric field the work function of the device can be lowered okay we already saw what do we mean by short key effect okay and by applying the electric field we can control the energy needed by an electron in order to escape okay and this facilitates the design of short key diode with lower as well as higher values of forward voltages okay so we can control at what point the diode should get forward and reverse bias by applying and by controlling this externally applied dc electric field right so this biasing of the diode is going to decide what values at which it we should get forward bias and reverse bias okay so the typical working principle is shown on the left hand side where we essentially find a metal on one of the side instead of a semiconductor and on the other side we see a n type silicon so a metal and semiconductor they are going to form a junction and this junction is a short key junction or it is also called as a short key barrier junction okay and this uh, this junction is forward bias or reverse bias in the nominal way as we normally do with ordinary semiconductor junction diodes okay so the symbolic representation how this particular diode is represented is shown over here okay so the short key bar barrier diode is slightly drawn with a different symbol so here instead of a bar we have this inverted s shaped bar which is representing the cathode right and on the right hand side the vi characteristic of a typical short key barrier diode is shown right so here the forward bias and reverse bias condition of a short key barrier diode are similar to ordinary pn junction diode but please remember here we can effectively control the forward bias forward triggering and reverse bias triggering of the short key barrier diode right now where we use this particular short key barrier diode the short key barrier diodes are used in a variety of different application for example the voltage clipping and clamping operations in order to reverse the current discharge protection circuits they are also used in order to rectify the micro signals we already know that the micro is a very high frequency and short key diodes are able to switch at a faster rate compared to ordinary pn junction semiconductors so that's why short key barrier diodes are popularly used for the rectification of the micro signal short key diodes are also used in low power transistor transistor logic circuits and they are also popularly utilized as a high speed or fast switching elements in the digital circuits right so on the right hand side the equivalent circuit of the short key barrier diode is shown okay so what it essentially consist of it essentially represented as a series resistor and a series inductor which is formed because of the internal resistance of the diode and because of the lead wires of the diode 
so the lead wire of the diode they will contribute to form the series capacitor sorry series inductor while the resistance of the diode is represented as a rs right and the junction capacitance and the junction resistance both can be varied by applying the dc potential across it and these are represented as a parallel combination of a resistor rj with capacitor cj where cj is the diode capacitance junction capacitance and the resistance of this particular junction is denoted by rj and here cp it indicates the overall package capacitance that will get formed after the manufacturing of diode okay so the equivalent circuit diagram of schottky diode is represented which is shown on the right hand side where rj is the junction resistance cj is the junction capacitance rs is the package resistance or the resistance of the diode itself lp is the package inductance or the lead inductance itself and cp is the package capacitance right so i hope you understood the principle of working of schottky barrier diode and what do i mean by a principal operation known as a schottky barrier and how it is different from a pn junction right and how the particular this schottky barrier diode is used and for in what different aspect this particular schottky diode is different from ordinary semiconductor diodes okay i hope you understood the principle of working main principle of working is the schottky principle you should know the schottky effect and why it is so called and how it is different in the detachment of the electron or the conduction of charge carrier when it is compared to semiconductor theory okay so we will go ahead and we will see another type of diode and here what we see is we will now go for pin diodes right we'll go for pin diodes so as far as uh, the diodes are concerned we first saw the point contact diode and then we completed the short key barrier diode now let us see the another type of a diode we call it as a pin diode okay so what is this pin diode again we'll go into the details construction application equivalent circuit and so on okay so the pin diode the name itself indicate the pin diode stands for actually it is an abbreviation for pin where the letter i in between p and n it stands for intrinsic layer right so whenever an intrinsic layer of semiconductor is pressed between the p type and n type semiconductors on the other side we will form a one type of a diode that type of a diode we call it as a pin diodes okay so actually the term i in the pin diode term stands for intrinsic layer of a semiconductor right so this particular arrangement so construction how we can solve so this diagram the intrinsic layer so this is the intrinsic layer of a semiconductor when this intrinsic layer of semiconductor is sandwiched between p type semiconductor and n type semiconductor it will form a diode contact right and this type of a diode actually this is a intrinsic so that means it is undoped region right so as this is a undoped region it is as good as a pure semiconductor right so as it is a pure semiconductor the p type and n type junctions are simply separated with an intrinsic layer so the structure will look like similar to this where the undoped pure semiconductor region is going to get sandwiched between the p type and n type semiconductors right so the resistivity of this type of a diode it ranges from 100 to 10 kilo ohm per centimeter okay so the intrinsic region is normally the active region the thick width of the intrinsic region is going to ensure that higher amount of reverse breakdown voltage is required in order to break down this particular diode right so the operating frequency of this particular diode it depends upon 
intrinsic region thickness and the external biasing condition okay so by varying the current flow through the device the resistivity of pin diode can be changed so this is a very important statement over here so how we can change the resistivity of this particular diode we can change the resistivity of this particular diode by varying the external current which is flowing through this particular diode by applying the bias okay so here what is the principle of operation hence by applying the bias external bias to this particular diode the resistance offered by this particular diode can be altered so basically this particular pin diode is used as the attenuator in the microwave signal processing so as on when we want to attenuate the signal that means we need to create some sort of a resistance in the circuit okay so whenever we want to attenuate the micro signal at a very high frequency at that time in order to attenuate the micro signal we need to introduce certain form of a resistance in the device now this resistance can be developed by using this particular type of diode and this diode we call it as a pin diode hence pin diodes are essentially used in order to generate resistance in the circuit which is utilized to attenuate the microwave signal so this is the basic purpose of making use of pin diode so again i will repeat pin diodes they are used to create resistance in the circuit so that the micro signals can be attenuated okay so here hence by applying the bias so how we can control the resistivity we should change the resistivity to lower value and upper values so how that can be done so by applying and by controlling the bias voltage given to this particular diode the resistance offered by the intrinsic layer of this diode is going to vary between 100 ohm to 10 kilo ohm it again based on how we are going to bias it okay so if you let the more current to flow through this intrinsic layer the resistance will decrease if we allow the external current to flow in a small amount the resistance of this intrinsic layer will increase so essentially pin diodes are used to provide resistance to the microwave signal and thus they are popularly used as a attenuation processing of the microwave signal right a typical symbol how this pin diode look like there is no as such separate symbol for the pin diode and it is shown as same as that of the ordinary pn junction diode okay and how typically the pin diode look like the typical figure actual image of the pin diode is shown over here on the right hand side okay so the construction wise the pin intrinsic layer is shown over here the construction of pin diode is shown on the left hand side where we have the p region and n region separated by a thick intrinsic region over here on the left hand side right so biasing of the pin diode is also shown over here the p type is supplied with a negative potential while the n type is supplied with a positive potential that means we are reverse biasing this particular diode so while reverse biasing the resistance offered by the junction that is the resistance offered by the intrinsic layer will be higher and by offering this particular resistance we can attenuate the micro signal right so the equivalent circuit of the pin diode is shown over here right so here we have a series combination of a inductor ls and resistor rs where the ls and rs are going to form the lead inductor and the resistance offered by the diode itself okay so while here at the junction of this particular pin diode we have the combination of junction resistance called as a rj and the junction capacitance which is indicated with a cj okay while cd is the package capacitance overall right so this is for the junction region of this pin diode and similarly the intrinsic region which is the middle part of this particular diode is also shown with a combination of intrinsic capacitance ci with intrinsic resistance ri which can be varied okay so here if you observe there are two combination of parallel 
capacitor and resistance these are shown separately for the junction part and for the intrinsic region separately okay and here the important thing over here is the resistance of the junction is fixed while the resistance of the intrinsic layer is variable over here and that is shown with a ri so that means by applying the external dc bias to this particular junction the junction resistance remains fixed while the resistance offered by the intrinsic layer is going to change and that's why we can control the value of offered resistance in the circuit right so the typical application of a pin diode are going to include the pin diodes are used in rf and dc controlled microwave switch okay so the microwave switching action whenever you want to attenuate the signal turn the particular diode on it will attenuate the signal the pin diodes are also used in rf variable attenuator circuit so as i already discussed the typical use of this particular diode in order to attenuate the micro signal they can be also used in a limiter circuit rf modulator circuit they can be used in a duplicator circuit and they can also be used in electronic phase shifters right so a typical application of pin diode as a switching element is shown over here in this particular circuit diagram right so here this is a two port network we have the input port and output port now at the input and output port we have the capacitor and here we have placed that particular pin diode so this is a pin diode right pin diode is actually written as a pin diode and this pin diode is having some lead reactance and this lead reactance corresponds to lead inductance okay now this pin diode is supplied with a certain dc bias and based on what type of bias it is either the diode will turn on and turn off okay so how this operates as a switch let us see the diode will forward biasing is going to provide low resistance between the rf okay and blocked as as it switch offs right so when we forward bias this particular diode what it will happen when we forward bias by controlling this particular dc bias what will happen to the rf input signal when the diode is forward bias it provides low resistance okay as it provides low resistance right so it will divert the rf signal in this particular direction because the resistance provided by this particular diode will be lesser and that's why all of the rf signal will get bypassed through this particular diode and that time we will get zero rf output right so when the diode will get forward bias it will provide low resistance path to the rf input signal and the rf input signal will get diverted and at that time we will get zero rf output right on the other hand if we control the dc bias such that when it gets reverse bias when it gets reverse bias it will offer a very high resistance right when it offers a very high resistance as good as it will become the open circuit so here the rf input signal is then going to follow the output path in this way and you will get some output at the output right so here the diode is acting essentially as a switch okay so when the diode is getting forward bias it will offer low resistance because of that intrinsic region and all of the rf input signal will get bypassed through the diode and there will not be any output at the output port on the other hand if this diode is reverse biased by controlling the applied external dc bias the diode will get and it will provide a very high resistance and as good as it will become an open circuit so at that time whatever input rf signal will get processed at the or it will reach at the direct output port okay so here essentially this pin diode is acting as a switch and this switch can operate at a very high frequency switching speed and that's why the pin diodes are a very popular choice to be used as a switching element in microwave signal processing right so i hope uh, you understood the theory of short key barrier diode 
and the theory of pin diode their equivalent circuit their working operation and their application so in our next lecture we will see two more important types of a diode that is tunnel diodes and varactor diodes and later on we will be starting with very special type of a diodes who are based on certain special properties and typically those diodes are being utilized for generation and amplification of the micro signal so here we have completed the important types of a diode like point contact diode short key barrier diode and pin diode in our next lecture we will start with varactor diodes and tunnel diodes and later on we will continue with special type of remaining diodes so here we stop and thank you very much.